What is up, everybody? Um, hold on, got to cancel this. There we go. Uh, you know, we should have an intro. I wonder if we have a real radio show. I know, right? I probably so I found my um my video editing software. I probably could um make us an intro. <laughs> and then we'd Happy be like, Monday. We'd actually be like a real like show or something. But yeah. We should have a strong entrance instead of this. We are we on, Tihi? Are, are we are we here? <laughs> yeah. So no joke, we had a show that used to do that. Are yeah. we on? Are we is this on? thing on? Is this thing on? It's always best when a when a when a brand new show um, starts out like somebody who has never ran the tech side of things <laughs> and never hosted like I mean honestly like cherry popping, jumping to the mm -hmm. show type deal and it was like. I think I did everything right. Uh, uh, let me okay. check this. Um, can you, can Anyways. You, can you get on your phone and see if we're live? Can you look? <laughs> can you do a sound check? Oh, look. People are in chat. Oh, look at that. Oh. Should I should I say something to them? I love those shows. Those are my favorite shows. I'm like, yes. It's like being at a conference call for work and uh, nobody muting. Everybody just talking and having conversations while the uh, person who's presenting like the whole conference calls like um I need everybody to mute mute so I can speak. And it's like fuck, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be the best conference call ever. Oh, uh, that was why I'm very happy we don't do those anymore. No. So happy Monday, everybody. Um, hey, I hope Monday. you guys. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. We are live. Coming to you from the VRS Quarantine Center, also known as Grandma's Basement. I mean, we um, can't even see Grandma anymore. This is bullshit. I know. I, You know, when she makes those Hot Pockets, she has to throw them down the stairs to us. Dude, I'm telling you right now, the pizza ones. I can't, I, I can't even keep a straight face with the that one. The sauce hurts, I'm telling you, man. That oh, shit is man. Like yeah, lava. and then why is the, spread, the center frozen solid? What the fuck? It's either they're either frozen salad or they're fucking molten lava. There's right. no there's no happy media. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so we miss grandma. Send hot pockets, guys. I hope everybody's doing okay out there. Um, what are we in like week three now? Rolling into week three of it quarantine. Feels like we're in like year two of this quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so I let's just say I didn't have a fantastic day. Um, we have a majority of my company is working from home at this point and we are making my IT department work for every fucking dime that they earn. Mm. And so everybody's on the VPN. They had to build a new VPN just specifically for this because we had so many people on it. Um, you might want to explain to people what a VPN is. Too. A virtual private network. So I mean, you D take D's your... Ernie's in the audience right now. His, oh, uh, you got a point. Trains. My bad. Yeah, those Navy guys. Also, so, so Glenn, Glenn S. is bound to show up. So you're definitely... Yeah, you got... Well, shit. Yeah. We'd have to edge it into stone tablets. Post, uh, I have a everybody. drill here somewhere. I literally have like a whole semi-workbench on my fucking desk here. <sighs> Good job. Yeah, so... Yeah. So yeah, we have a VPN, and that is where your home computer can basically it you you can go into your work network and you can work on your desk at the office. You can log into your desk at the office from your home computer with certain software. Right. So I've been doing this for years. I've never had an issue until we had you know ninety percent of the company on the VPN and. I kept getting booted off today and it wasn't just me, like the entire department I'd go to, I'd get an incoming call and I'd be like, Hey, lunchbox. I got this guy calling for you and he's on this extension and then you'd disappear. <laughs> like, and it just kept happening all day. We just kept getting one by one booted off the network. And then you'd be on the network by yourself during lunchtime when all the calls come in. So that was a good time. And then nobody's on the call center. And finally, at about 5.15, I had it. I logged in after lunch. Normally, I make 100 outbound phone calls a day. Jesus. So that's, yeah, about that's, that. That's, that's, that's like 99 calls more than I would ever want to make in my, for <laughs> like a week. Well, and here's the thing. It's, uh, you know, I would say probably 
a third of what I do is drivers that I'm already working with. Right. So it's, it's enjoyable conversations. The second half of my day is not so enjoyable because, um, I'm focusing on, you know, developing new business basically. Gotcha. So this afternoon I lunched, logged back in from lunch and I got three fucking phone calls made out, made in about three hours. So I sent a message to my, as about two and a half, I sent a message to my boss and it was after the call center technically can close. And I was like, I'm logging off for the day. My calls have been horrible today. I've been getting booted all day and I'm going to lose it. I was like, this has just not been a good day for me. I'll make it up tomorrow. I just, <clears throat> I could feel myself getting Hulk smash angry. Right. You know, and I know my limitations and, you know, when you live a life that is where PTSD is the very fiber of your being, you know, when you're on the edge and you know when it's time to be like, okay, it's time to step away from the triggers, whatever's wanting to incite the riot inside of me, it's time to walk away for a minute. So I'm glad I did that. I, I really, really needed it. I should have, this morning I woke up thinking I should call in sick because I'm just... I want to tell everybody to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, we're, like, my whole family's home right now, so we're just, I don't know. Are you guys dry? Okay, so this is really interesting because we have two extremes here. You're at home with your family, and I'm alone right. with my cats. Have you guys driven each other crazy? Because me and my personalities, we just want to kill each other. <laughs> Nope, so far so good. Um, yeah, we just been playing, well, cleaning the house here and there, and uh, playing video games. We picked up Mario Kart last night for the Switch. And oh, nice! So, which eventually is going to cause a fight because, like, I was destroying my daughter earlier in it. So she was she was <laughs> not let them win every once in a while. She was not happy. Well, no, she comes in like second and third, but. Usually during the race, she will pass me at some point. It would be first, uh -huh. and I'm always and holding then blow on to, it. I'm always holding on to a green turtle shell and whatever. I'm fucking. I'm, uh -huh. I'm surgical with that bitch. Like I will drill you. So yeah, <laughs> there goes that. For Maybe her. we should do that on the air. Play play a little Mario Kart. Yeah, we should play something. Like I felt next uh, week. So so Bleacher Report, which is a, a huge sports. They they cover all kinds of sports yes. and whatnot. Um, they're actually there, doing, is there anything for them to cover right now? No. So they're doing a monster Madden tournament, like all the teams, but it's all um, oh, the, that's the awesome. very best on each team, like throughout all the decades. Yeah. So they're just doing like this huge tournament. I was like, shit, you know what? I should like start a season of Madden and uh, let everybody in the audience pick who the, who the hell I pick on my team. And then we should just roll right. from there. Right. Right. Right now, That's currently, awesome. if you guys want to share out the show and whatnot. Um, yeah, make sure you wash your hands or use hand sanitizer before you do. We don't want to be exposing anybody to the Corona Cooties or the Kung Flu, as we're calling it here. Yes. Yeah, I'm currently looking at what groups I could share it out. That, uh, oh, Bob even... George says, Glenn Estes played Mario Kart with Ben-Hur. <laughs> and Chariots? Love Bob. That's fucking oh, that is fucking awesome. Oh, well, look at that. Something I was supposed to mail out like a week ago. Yeah. Oh my God. <clears throat> Get it together. So we got a lot to talk about. I got a lot of, um, okay. We are going to talk about the Kung flu, yeah. but I will tell you, I, lunchbox, I don't know about you, but I scour the news daily and not just for our show, just, What's going on in the world? I had to stop looking. <laughs> so I don't know. I couldn't take it. I just looked on uh on a on a the Monday night mayhem page and whatever. Where where stream is on there and Dean Servi says pick me, pick me, pick me. I don't know <laughs> if I don't know if Dean wants to be on my football team or if he wants to play Madden with me. Or Mario Kart. Or Mario Kart. So just to get sidetracked because, you know, that's what we do. Um, Terrell from Sports Church um, plays drunken Mario Kart. Like, I don't know if it's every that night. That sounds my style. Right. I don't know if it's every night, but, I mean, I can get down with that. I'm 
just read. Dean Cerny right. apparently didn't know where where everybody was. He says, "Sup, you motherfucking bitches!" Now that I'm in the right chat, of course he's all caps, so he's yelling it at all of us. Right. But I mean, let's see. <laughs> so we so we got Dean Cerny in here. We'll say hi to everybody. Hi Dean. Hi John Boren. Um, well, Pardos was in here. Bob Jordan. Yep. Yeah, David Goyette. Uh, Raven True Blood, which me and him have been messaging each other back and forth here a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. Scott um, Penny. Yep, Scott's here. Uh, Pookie's here from uh, Sports Church. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, else? who else we got in here running through? If you're here, say hi. Like, type in chat. Hi. Which chat are you monitoring? I'm on Monday Night Mayhem. I'm in both VRS and the Monday Night Mayhem. Okay. Mitchell Rankin, otherwise known as the Rankinator. Good. Thank you for joining us. Bob Jordan says he has a Space Invaders plug and play game. Shit, I, I used to have Space one Invaders. of those. Um, we had a, a plug in. My kids had a plug and play that had a bunch of Atari games and it was awesome. The kids are like, oh my God, this is so lame. I'm like, you shut your filthy mouth. Right. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Should never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> These games were hard when we were kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, do you have any any uh any kung flu news? We just had our first uh our death associated to it in our county. No, funny stuff. Not Oh no. <laughs> um funny stuff. I almost did a I almost did a marriage. Wait, what? Yeah. Why the fuck would any All right. What is the world coming to when a pandemic is causing people to get married? What is so, wrong with people? So, um, the leader of our of our local Blue Star Mothers uh, organization, she she contacts me and she goes, "Hey, you're you're able to do wedding ceremonies, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this is out. Of, this is completely left field." But I'm like, "Yeah, why?" <laughs> she's like, "Well, I just got contacted now. She's also um, like a town clerk and." My wife's uncle is like a legislator for the town or something like that too, and he happened. They both happened to be at the office, and I guess somebody called in asking if like a justice of the peace was around because they need a wedding ceremony, and they were like freaking out. And uh, he was like, "Well, Josh could do it." And so she contacted me through through Facebook. I was like, yeah, "Okay." So she was like, "Hey, can you call this number?" And now it's an out of state number. So I'm like, "No, I don't." I don't even call in state numbers, like let alone an out state number. But I'm gonna right. Really use this. Wait, wait, so, wait. Just uh, to interrupt you really quick, yeah. Bob Jordan. You know how there's a lag, so like their comments show up a minute or two later. Yeah. Bob Jordan says there's 48 cases here in his county. Are we talking 48 cases of the kung flu, or are we talking about 48 cases of unfortunate marriage timing, or cases <laughs> of corona? <laughs> That's Dean Cerny says. I have 48 cases of beer. Yeah. In my garage. Cheers. <laughs> but so I, I find this uh this this a bride to be on uh, Facebook and I'm like, hey, I'm understanding that you guys need someone to perform a wedding ceremony. She's like, Yeah. I'm like, Okay, cool. Where do you want to do it? like I can do it. Like I am licensed in like I think the I think I could do it in like forty eight states or something like that. Like I did Minnie's wedding, I did my sister's yep. wedding. My other sister's currently engaged. I'll be doing her wedding, so I don't mind doing them. But I, I like was flat out honest with the with the girls. Like, um, I've only done two weddings, and um, due to like she wanted it, like this was in the morning time. She wanted it in the afternoon. I was like uh, that afternoon. To, yeah, that afternoon. I was like, due to how close this is, I'm basically not dressing up for shit. Did um, you hear the shotgun in the background too? Right. <laughs> I was like, I'm not dressing up for shit, and you already have your own vows. She was like, uh, we don't really have like any vows. Um, and then there was like a like a pause in between that for like almost an hour, and so like I was like, well, I can do it, fuck them. And about an hour later, finally they they come they they come back on the girl, and she's just like, oh, I think we figured it out, and blah blah blah, this this and the other, and I'm like, yeah, you literally sat at home and went. Fuck, this guy really ain't gonna do like, like shit for us. He's just gonna come out and marry us and sign off on it, which with a like four hours notice, what do you what'd you expect? Like I what? expected Billy Idol's nice day for a white wedding. Yeah. <laughs> 
in four hours. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. What? Why would you get married at a time like this when apparently in China, <laughs> divorce cases are soaring? Are they? Yes, because of the quarantines. Oh, that's now, amazing. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, think you're I don't know if I believe that. Now, yeah, this is in mainstream media. I don't know if I believe that. I'm, oh, my God. I don't believe a lot of mainstream media anymore. So. Mitchell Reichenator says, not today, Isis, when he was he was referring to you and your wedding ceremony. Right. So the reason I don't believe this about the divorce rate is, isn't everything in China closed? Like, China's even closed. Well, and How the I, fuck is the divorce rate soaring? So, like, in their, like, I didn't think, like, if you were under communism, like, you really couldn't get a divorce, like. Because, like, isn't the woman, like, I mean, the woman's shamed any fucking way because they're kind of <laughs> country, but, um, like, she's, like, super I shamed just... after that, right? Like, <laughs> like, they just, they, basically, you're just fucked after that. It's almost like being Catholic and getting fucking divorced. Like, if you want to stay in the church, you just Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. I, I'm cat. Well, I grew up Catholic. How's that? I gave that up for Lent. <laughs> right, that's a fair thing to give up for Lent. So, what... Honestly, when I got married to my first wife, she was a non-practicing Catholic. And all of a sudden, like, I think it was our second year in, all the, like, it's like uh, Christmas Eve. And she's like, all right, so we have to go to Christmas Mass. And I go, Christmas who? And she's like, Christmas Mass. And I'm like, why? Why are we doing that? I don't understand. She's like, well, I'm a Catholic. I'm like, since when? <laughs> she, she's just like. Well, was this on Christmas Eve, midnight yeah, mass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, actually a beautiful mass. ceremony. Well, yeah, but I was just like, wait, since what? Why? why <laughs> what are we doing? Like, when did, did this happen overnight? Was it in I your? Bless myself. Right. Did, was it in the bottom of your cereal box? And you pulled it out. And you got fries. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the fuck's going on. And uh, she's like, oh, let, let's just go. You'll you'll like it. All right, I'll I'll try it out. Why not? Showed up showed up to midnight mass or Christmas mass or whatever the hell it is and. So we get to like, we sat down, chilling there. All of a sudden, everybody gets up. I'm like, all right, this is pretty standard, you know. Get up, sit down. Get up, sit down. Nope, they pull out like the fucking little bench deal where you got to kneel down on it too. Oh like, yeah, you had to do some full up aerobics. Right, absolutely. I'm like, I'm like looking around. I'm like, so what are we doing? She's like, just just follow follow what I do. And she starts doing the dominus dominus and da 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 da. I'm like. I don't know none of this, man. Like, I'm going to screw this up. I'm going to conjure a freaking demon in the middle of the Catholic Church. Like, this is going to be terrible. And she's like... I love... Wait a minute. Hold on. Huh. I grew up Catholic. I even went to Catholic school uh, up in, from kindergarten until eighth grade. Yes, all you fucking perverts out there I even wore the skirt. And I burned that bitch when I graduated, too. Um, you you just gave half our audience, like... like People I are know, just bonkers. walking away That's right okay. now doing other things. We're, we're, yeah, they're they're checking Pornhub now. You're right. Catholic schoolgirls. <laughs> Wait, did you know that Glenn Estes was the opening act for Beethoven? So the reason I stopped you, so I, you know, like grew up in Catholic school. I was inundated with it. And I love hearing an outsider's take to anything when it comes to Catholic church and mass and all it's, it cracks me up. Other Catholics that are listening now are like, are laughing right along with me. That was basically the end of my story anyways, but so I mean, speaking ba- of, this was an excellent segue like to it. one of my first stories. What do you got? Oh, it's from this. I found this. Actually, I don't remember where I heard about it. I think I may. So every morning I listen to uh, several different news podcasts on my Echo Dot. And I think I heard this on my Echo Dot in in one of the podcasts. <laughs> but I picked the story up. I searched for it because I was like, I don't believe that. <laughs> I picked it up from the New York Post. So this happened. You know, anything that involves a meeting of 10 people or more and you know like this is a global lockdown absolutely not so a lot of churches have resorted to doing online services and and you know going back to television services and shit like that right 
I love this article. And I am going to post a link to this article because there is the video in the article. An Italian p- priest broke Facebook's cardinal rule, never leave the filters on. Paolo Longo, a priest at the Church of San Pietro and San Benedetto de Paula in Salerno province, made the social media sin while streaming a Catholic mass on Facebook during the country's coronavirus lockdown. During the nearly 50-minute mass, Facebook AR filters activate to make Longo appear to be wearing various animated outfits, including a futuristic helmet and a wizard hat. Oh, my God. Uh, You made us laugh, but without malice, only with great affection, a a follower responded in Italian. The priest also laughed off the air, later posting, even a laugh is good in Italian. So I it's so fucking funny because there's one point where he's first off. The best one is when he gets the fedora and the sunglasses. And it looks like the fucking Blues Brothers. That's awesome. Oh my god, I have... This is the video that is going to... Just save that. Save that for yourselves. When you're having a bad day, watch this video. (laughs) Oh, I posted it in the comments on Monday Night Mayhem's um, Facebook stream. That is... So that's what we're here to talk to you guys tonight (laughs) about. Let me tell you. You guys know we do a lot of news stuff, uh, what's going on in the world. And guess what's going on in the world? The coronavirus. That's That's, it. There's nothing else. Like, if we don't have anything to talk about, we're fucked. We're going to have to do, like, make our own shit up as we go. Who is posting shit? Hold on. No, you're good. You going to make it? I don't know. Oh. Scott is sending me stuff with Florida Man here. Ah, okay. So, I have been looking for news that is entertaining. Coronavirus news. Uh, This one actually, this actually could be... Lunchbox and I are thinking about doing a new segment, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. I just shit myself. This is... Thanks. (laughs) That's bad. That is, bad. that is not the new name. That is not. Continue. Continue the story. I can't. <laughs> that is not the segment name, folks. <laughs> what he just said. I think it blew out an O-ring. That's it's fucking bad. Stop. I can't. This is not the Monday night Met watch Judy laugh show. Woo! Almost didn't make it. <laughs> I was waiting for Tuffy to just reach up and smack you. <laughs> I know, right? He's already looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing, Mom? Right. I'm sorry, Tuffy. Am I disturbing your rest? It's like, he's like, be professional, Mom. This is bullshit. <laughs> I didn't sign you up for this, for you to Scott. just laugh the whole time. Scott Penthony says that's your new name. <laughs> What's that? Scott, Scott Penthony just says that's your new name. I'm assuming he's... <laughs> Talking about what you said. I need a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this out of Nashville, the State Department of Health is advising doctors to use diapers and swim goggles (laughs) to protect their faces if they cannot obtain personal protective (laughs) equipment due to shortages related to the COVID-19 outbreak. Dr. Son- Sonal Gupta spoke during a video news conference. She is one of more than 2,000 Tennessee doctors and nurses who petitioned, her, petitioned Governor Bill Lee to issue an immediate stay-at-home order to try to slow the spread of the new virus. Their warnings have become increasing, increasingly dire with predictions of 40,000 deaths in Tennessee without more serious restrictions. There are a, I will talk about morons here later when it comes to restrictions. Um, On Thursday, Tennessee was reporting 957 confirmed cases with three deaths. Uh, Nashville has the highest number of confirmed cases. Uh, And a spokeswoman for Vanderbilt University Medical Center said that 40 of their healthcare workers have tested positive so far. 
They are all self-isolating at home. Uh, Governor Lee ordered bars and restaurants to close for 14 days with the exception of takeout and delivery services. It has finally happened in Tennessee. You can get your alcohol to go as long as it's in a closed container. Lee's orders also includes closed gyms, barred most visitors, blah, blah, blah. So just imagine you go to the hospital because you suspect you're sick with the coronavirus and a doctor walks in (laughs) with a fucking diaper (sighs) and a pair of swim goggles on their face. It's a typical Monday night for us. I can't, like, what What in the name of Scuba Steve are we doing here? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You're right, though. It is a regular Monday night. So, of course, the, the campaign tagline in Tennessee is do your part, stay apart. And it's all over the, the marquee boards, over the highway, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting for the time where we're all supposed to wear diapers on our faces. Was there going to be a diaper shortage then, too? I, I want to I I, give a big shout out to uh, to a, to a Damien uh, Rosa, who's in the, the the BRS chat. He's local to me. He's my uh, huh? he's my nephew's uh, stepbrother. He's actually mm-hmm. uh, supply geek over in Korea right now at uh, Camp Humphrey. Oh Jesus! Yeah, he said all the barbershops, religious services are closed there on camp. Um, yeah, um, thank you for continuing what you do. Buddy. Absolutely. We'll do some gaming um I have plenty of time. So <laughs> Right. Some of you guys have nothing but time on your hands. Right. Hey, I <clears throat> I'm going to say I am incredibly grateful for the job that I have. Um because I'm still working. Right. And I realize how how many people are not. And having to file for unemployment benefits, which takes forever if you're even going to get it. So I got to help my wife file for hers tomorrow. Um, Yeah. That's got to be horrifying. You guys just literally just bought a house. Yeah, we're good, though. We're good. We're we're good for a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, and what's the point even trying to look for a job? Because everybody else is, too. Right. And not only that, but. It's all retail right now. There's really because everybody else is home. So, right. Well, yeah, and like Walmart is hiring in mass, but as soon as this thing dies down, you're going to get laid off again. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the grocery stores, at least locally to me, are um, they're paying a couple extra dollars an hour too because they're just working to death right now. So, mm-hmm. But that but that'll all stop though. So. Right. Right. You know, yeah, I think they, Walmart has raised their pay as, and every as well. So, for those of you guys who were ThreatCon 5 listeners, um, you know, we <clears throat> we talked about some very um, interesting stories, sh- shall we say. Um, and I an- another one, the New York Post just brings the best of the trash, man. It really does. So this article from the New York Post is talking about uh, people capitalizing, using their whatever business they run to capitalize on sales at this time. And that includes sex doll companies. Yes, we have talked about them before uh, for both men and women. So this is kind of a little follow up. Sex doll companies have an important public service message. Self-isolating can be fun and safe at the same time. Abyss, the maker of sex robots Real Dolls, assured potential buyers that its dolls are free of COVID-19 in an Instagram post. Self-isolating doesn't have to be the worst. All Real Dolls are made from platinum-grade silicone and are naturally antibacterial and non-porous. Want one? Is what the company's caption reads. Nice. An online publication reveals, or sorry, an online publication that reviews sex dolls also offered a blog post trying to combat myths regarding sex dolls and the coronavirus. How about the myth that you're fucking weird if you have one? <laughs> <laughs> How about the myth of um, 
you'll never have a significant other that is real ever again, like an actual human being. Sex doll industries have been greatly affected as most of these products were made and delivered from China. Well, no shit. But to the break of the but to break the existing perception toward China-made sex dolls, is there really a high risk of product-to-human viral transmission? <laughs> One firm answer was no, the post continues. There is no medical proof that upholds this claim. You're right, because the virus does not ex- ex- exist on surfaces for several days. No one has proved that yet at all. Um, <laughs> Dean, Dean and Bob. <laughs> Um, Dean Cerny to throw this is good info wife and I need one one of each so we can just quit fucking each other and Bob Jordan said he just wipes his down with baby wipes when he's done oh my god I mean if it ain't you broke, slice all wipes Bob you can't <laughs> find them anywhere you got a point there you hey kitty asshole. get off my keyboard you fucker <laughs> Duffy's typing to China so uh Get off the keyboard, ass clown. You're gonna, you're gonna have to get him his own, like his own keyboard. And I know, right? Like, go sit on that cam. desk. Go sit on my work desk. I, I like when you he sits get, on my lap. That's fine, but you get him his own Skype, like have it all <laughs> set up, and we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll just have a little corner there where, where it says Tuffy, yep. just fucking shit up. Yep. Oh, we should totally should do that. It would take you a week to unfuck the laptop, but I mean that could be your fun. <laughs> So, uh, according to this company, sex dolls assembled or imported from China have no harm to people. Uh, sex doll maker Silicone Wives. Oh, my God. Really? That's a company name? They have also tried capitalizing on the pandemic with a giveaway contest for free sex dolls to help with the coronavirus quarantine. Are you stuck inside with nothing to do? For the coronavirus quarantine, we're giving away free sex dolls to ease your social distancing. Listen, I live alone with two cats. I'm not getting a sex doll. I'll uh, continue living you alone. You almost paused too long there. Like, that was, yeah, I almost <laughs> felt like that was the end of the sentence for a half a second. I'm like, <laughs> I'll, no sex dolls will be in this house. Thank you very little. I mean, come on. You don't need sex dolls anymore. Pornhub Premium is free. And it's glorious. <laughs> what am I doing here? Municipal and state governments across the country have started creating and enforcing strict rules to keep residents inside to order to flatten the curve and slow the split, spread of the pandemic. Um, and in September, we've been talking about this for about a year now, I think. The Post reported that sales of male sex dolls were already on the rise. Not in this house, they're not. Sorry. Just just saying. <sighs> that, like, isn't that like how Skynet started? Like, every time I watch fucking The Terminator, <laughs> like, I'm like, this is how it all starts. Oh, my God. Bob Jordan, one of my sex dolls complained of a headache the other night. <laughs> and he says... My sex doll is like having sex with a human woman. I always have to do all the damn work. (laughs) Yeah, but you don't have to listen to her complain afterwards or ask for stuff. Now, the downside, that is, you'll never get any sandwiches from your sex doll. I I can't believe that people are... So... So those robot Excellent ones, marketing. There we go. That's all I can say about that. So the, so the freaking robot ones, did they actually get up and like walk around and move and shit? I, we have not looked that far into it because we're all a little disturbed by it. How's that? Like, okay, so we need, we need boots on the ground with this one. Like that. <laughs> we need somebody to take one for the team. Just, oh my God. This is fan- too. This, this could yeah. be the next GoFundMe. That <laughs> the Monday Night Mayhem sponsored sex doll for one lucky audience member. Now we're, we're not going to put anything into it, but it has to be one of the robots. They're pretty ones. pricey, if I remember from one yeah, article they're earlier. Uh, yeah, they're close to thirty grand. Right. I mean, I could get a, a nice Mustang for that. I found a saline, two thousand five saline, in Bakersfield, California, that I really like. 
I'd prefer to do that. <laughs> Find a whole bag of nails on my desk. I don't even be putting those there. Those are in the trash. So just in case you guys missed it, apparently Lunchbox is going to be cleaning his desk while we are on the air instead of focusing on the show. No, I'm going to start a, Go, a, a GoFundMe too. Oh, uh, you taking notes on that? <clears throat> no, what is this receipt for? I don't need this. <laughs> Anyways. So I have some more... Um, I have some more interesting oh, news. How's that? Interesting slash entertaining slash oh. funny. Oh, uh. excuse us. Tuffy's coming through, apparently. <laughs> Later, dude. I mean, I could... Let me see. <clears throat> the fuck? Why isn't this working? But a can of electronics duster at, uh, at the Dollar Tree. What could possibly you go You bought on? it at Dollar Tree. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, shit. This is what the the has done to us. Like Dean Cerny says, thirty grand for a fucking. I wonder how bad this sounds on the mic. It sounds like an air can. Mm, oh well. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're gonna move to our kung flu virus section called <laughs> play. <laughs> st- <laughs> called. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. God, it's one of my favorites. Yes, this is also from the New York Post. <clears throat> so this actually happened not far from... Um, so my company, where my department is, is near Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and this didn't happen far from there. And as I was reading this article, one of my coworkers was like, Dude, listen to this douche! A Pennsylvania woman ruined an estimated $35,000 worth of goods by intentionally coughing all over them while the coronavirus plagues nations worldwide. The woman visited a Hanover Township location of the small grocery chain Garrity's Supermarket uh, last Wednesday and coughed on fresh produce, a small section of bakery, a meat case, and grocery items. Uh, authorities do not believe the woman whose name is still unknown. Oh, sure it is, is infected with the virus, but they will make every effort to get her tested. The woman is also, you guys might be surprised by this. You know, if you've never listened to our show before, this will shock you. The woman is also said to be a chronic problem in the community. While there is little doubt this woman was doing it as a very twisted prank, we will not take any chances with the health and well-being of our customers, we had no choice but to throw out all the products she came in contact with. Garrity's supermarket called the cops immediately, and more than 15 employees worked with the Hanover Township health inspector to thoroughly clean and disinfect the store. The case has been escalated to the district attorney's office. They have assured me that they will be aggressively pursuing numerous charges. Now, I have not followed up to see if... They found this woman, but I just have this strange feeling since she's a problem in the community. It probably didn't take them very long. No, probably not. Uh, The only silver lining to this travesty is that it gave us the unfortunate opportunity to test our protocols and demonstrate how seriously we take your safety, um, said the spokesperson. Let me tell you, I used to work retail. I used to be a manager. Guess what happens when you write off $35,000 worth of product? It goes back into your fucking store prices. Mm. Yes, it yeah, is. so, you know, if you notice that the shit is starting to creep up, guess why? It's because people are fucking stupid. Like, you know, these morons that are uh, licking ice cream and putting it back, they have to wipe out, you know, the entire section. You can't take any chances with getting somebody sick. Um, yeah, it's fucking nasty. Yeah, it's, and what the fuck is wrong with people? So, <clears throat> that, I, I just, how do I say this? I Karma's a bitch, how's that? There, that's, I said, that's how you say it. Right. Then there's another jackass. This guy seems quite proud of his work because his mugshot is amazing. A New Jersey man, go figure was busted on Tuesday after coughing on a Wegmans employee and telling her he had the coronavirus. The staffer at the, uh, I guess is Manalpin, I don't know how to say that, grocery store, 
worried that George Falcone was standing too close to her and an open dis- display of food Sunday and asked him to take a step back. Now, remember, what's the distance? Six feet, right? Yeah. And anybody that asks for that should be, you know, you should honor that. Yeah. Instead, the 50-year-old creep allegedly came closer and purposely sprayed her with germs, um, is what the uh, attorney general is stating. He allegedly laughed and said he was infected with the coronavirus. He then told two other employees that they were lucky to have jobs. Summonses were issued Tuesday charging Falcone with making terroristic threats obstruction of law and harassment and will require him to appear in court on a later date. Wasn't, Terroristic threats. Wasn't the last name Falcone like a, a bad guy in like one of the Batmans, one of the newer ones? <laughs> Could have sworn it was. Don't, in my memory, maybe. Um, and of course the Attorney General had to warn anyone who tries to pull a similar stunt will also be charged. These are extremely difficult times. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? Terroristic threats. Good job. Now you're considered a terrorist for the rest of your fucking life because you just thought you were cute. You don't come off that list. (laughs) Yeah, you don't come off that list. Again, congratulations. Play stupid games. Win stupid prizes. Hold on the video autoplay. Shut up. Another one from the New York Post. God, this, this media source is not letting me down this week, except it won't stop playing the video. A 21-year-old Tennessee woman who bragged on social media about not taking the coronavirus outbreak seriously has been diagnosed with the deadly illness. Ireland Tate joked about not following instructions to stay at home and practice social distancing amid the pandemic just days before she fell sick. In a social media video, the Nashville resident, remember Nashville's the worst city for this right now, told her followers that she's aware that we're supposed to be self-quarantining and social social distancing to keep everyone safe, but that she wasn't worried. She says, cool, I get it. I just don't think that I'm going to get the virus. (sighs) Remember when it was, what it was like to be that young and dumb lunchbox when we were all invincible? So I'm I'm just reading the comments. Um, Jade Lopez said, if my short legs can reach you with a donkey kick, which I read that really ass backwards <laughs> you're too close to me bro. like i i really read that as donkey dick and i was like <laughs> like i just sit there and stare at it for a minute um don't you love it when you're breezing through comments you're like wait what yeah and dean Surdy said or the mayor of new york saying the national guard is of, is of the military i mean oh <laughs> well if you if you're active duty, do you really count National Guard? Do you call them nasty girls? And, yeah. Mm. Just kinda, oh, found, <sighs> they have a very difficult job to do right now. That Canada's is for Canada's favorite hero. Duke Kaboom. <laughs> found him on my desk. Where should I put so, Duke Kaboom? Uh, this viral chick from Nashville says a few days later she found herself suffering from symptoms associated with the dangerous bug and tested positive. She said, it feels like someone is sitting on my chest at all times. It's really hard to breathe. I've coughed until my throat has bled. Ooh. That sounds terrible. Yeah, you probably should get that checked out. Yeah. <laughs> Tate said she likely got the virus from a pal in her group of friends, and she's now warning other young people to stay home. Oh, so you mean don't, don't do as I say? I mean, do as I say, not as I do? Sounds about right. She says, while it may not be affecting you, it could be affecting someone's grandma or grandpa. Or Really? We mm. didn't know that before your fucking 21-year-old words of wisdom. Right. No doubt. Fucked hard. And then, <clears throat> uh, again, this is my favorite one. New York Post. Thank you very much. <sighs> I, okay, we have talked about... I have wondered why people had no toilet paper before this. I have wondered why people had no cleaning products before this. I mean, if you needed to buy cleaning products to meet the needs of this virus, you're all filthy fucking pigs. Unless you just happen to run out at this time, which happens. Why do I have a travel toothbrush kit on my desk? (laughs) Because you told someone, go put that on my desk. 
or they're that playing right jokes there. on you because they knew you were going to do this on the air. Let's see, I got a bin over there. What bin can I throw this into? Ooh, Girl Scout camp bin. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh, I hit the wrong bin. It went to the Barbie bin. Well, Apparently, I'm doing this show all by myself tonight while he cleans his desk. Look, <laughs> I am. I am right here. I am entertaining. <laughs> I'm asking you why I have certain things on my desk because I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Oh, it's my, it's my sound effect thing. I probably so this is my there. favorite play stupid games, win stupid prizes for the coronavirus so far. Or the, I'm sorry, the Kung Flu. Kung flu. Again, the New York Post. Man, they've just been, they've been nailing it. Um, a California social media prankster claims he was hospitalized with the coronavirus just days after posting a video of himself. Lunchbox, you're going to want to listen to this. I am listening. I've been listening the whole time. Licking a toilet bowl Heard for a that. nauseating online challenge. Heard about that. Let's go back to Tide Pods, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, I heard about that though. That was that was something else. Oh, uh, I oh okay. Just gonna let you guys know I might not make it through the story. Without because speaking? I I'm a little bit of a germ freak. The TikTok personality known as Lars reportedly posted footage of himself in a hospital bed on Sunday. No, this is last week, I believe. I tested positive for coronavirus, the 21-year-old from Beverly Hills tweeted on an account that has been since suspended, the outlet reported. It comes just two days after... the coronavirus, too. Yeah. Because he's fucking stupid, and we don't want you doing that shit. It comes just two days after the prankster, who goes by the social media handle, Gay Sean Mendez, posted him a video of himself on Friday. Oh, it's even worse. <laughs> I don't even know how that happens, but cool. continue. <laughs> Running his tongue across a public toilet. Public, not even home, public as a part of part of a bizarre and widely criticized coronavirus challenge on social media. Mm. Please go back to Tide Pods. Mm. The craze seen mainly on TikTok, a video sharing platform, spurs users to post footage of themselves licking everything from toilets to grocery store produce. It wasn't clear whether Lars's apparent infection was linked to the stunt. Th that's not hard to figure out. Come on. It comes as the number of infected Americans, blah, 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 deaths. Yeah, blah, blah. And I am going to post this because there are other people taking this challenge. What I find interesting is the age of these people that are doing this stupid shit. We've had two stories now where they were 21. Um, so the social media influencer has previously appeared on the Dr. Phil show. Oh, you know, then he's a, he's a lunatic. Yeah where he drew criticism for boasting about how he'd licked tubs of ice cream before putting them back in store freezers and claimed he made lots of money from his online following. Yep, there's even video in this <clears throat> so article. I'm trying to convince that I can almost talk anybody that's from like the age of 17 into like yeah, almost 24. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you can pretty much convince them to do anything. I, I, sir, mm, bad thing is, is I have kids this age and God, I hope they're smarter than this. <laughs> See when, and it was nice when they were in, in my house. Cause I could be like, I was reading this on my phone in the news. Do you see this shit? Please don't snort Tide Pods or whatever it was they were doing, you know? And I'd be like, this is why this is dumb. And they, they'd all look at me like people are doing that and i'm like yes your friends are doing this or people you know are doing this shit please don't do this shit <sighs> i mm. these people make my head hurt so did you have you done anything in the last week no. to get oh, out I of the house <laughs> what what'd you say i said no and then you continued with it you asked if i did anything in the last week i was like no okay no. <laughs> yeah. So you guys know that. <clears throat> uh, okay. I have no idea if we're going to have this tough mutter in September. I mean, God knows how long this whole 
canceled events bullshit can go on. But I still have to train for it. it uh, so it's a Tough Mudder. This is only a 5K, but I've got to train for the run and I've got to train for the obstacles. So I have to be in pretty decent shape. And, you know, um, this birthday year, I'm knocking exactly on 50's door. I will be 49 in August. So training, I'll just say it's a little more difficult at this age. How's that? Especially when you right. break your finger. Um <laughs> I mean, for fun. You got some weird fun, just for fun. activities. Yeah, just for fun. So, I, um, nature is not closed. How's that? I went to the park this weekend. Now, all of our parks are closed. All the public areas where you could gather where there's seating or equipment to play on, that shit's all closed. It's fucking barricaded. And then it's also surrounded with yellow tape. Do not cross. Of course, there's still fucking morons like, trying to like get in there. Like there's a fucking crime scene there? Yeah. Nice. And, you know, I, I guess that's so that stupid people know <laughs> that they're entering at their own risk, you know, because um, they're in, you know, the state, most states are incredibly concerned about the coronavirus and how long it can exist on solid surfaces. So that's why all these things are closed. That's why we're trying to do a minimum of two weeks quarantine. Um, so I go to the park. None of the trails are closed. So there's there's a dam, uh, a TVA dam that is not far from my house. I go there and I ran a little bit. And I didn't want to post anything. I wanted to post for my Instagram account, my Instagram, Instagram account, a picture of myself at the park. But I was like, somebody's going to lose their fucking shit on me. And then I'm going to have to go off on them about how social distancing works. Because I had to go to the grocery store three fucking times this week. Why did I have to go to the grocery store three times? Once I forgot something. That's not a big deal. But I had to go to the grocery store twice because I couldn't get all of my fucking shit on one day because of all you fucking hoarders. So... I am definitely at more risk at the grocery store where I'm touching shit mm -hmm. like carts and, you know, all the products that you're picking up. Now, I don't have anybody to come get my groceries for me. I'm single. I live alone. Even if I had somebody to come bring my groceries to me, I'm still at risk because I still have to touch all the shit that came from the grocery store. Yeah. So my biggest risk to myself since I work from home right now and live alone, my biggest risk is the grocery store, and that's the one place I have to go to. Well, so I was like, like, fuck it. I'm going to the park. <laughs> right? Well, it's like I'm all these breaking people... protocol. I'm breaking quarantine. Right? And, and it's like all these people, too, like, oh, just stay home. Order from, like, Instacart and all these other apps and whatnot. You, the person that's delivered it actually is probably the biggest person that's going to be spreading shit. So Right, because you... they're touching everybody's shit, and they're yeah. seeing everybody. I don't want to order from Instacart. Plus, I know when I go get my own groceries, I get the produce that I want. I'm not going to yeah. get the shit that nobody wanted, right? By the way, my, my sister who's in the chat, um, hi, Anna. Um, she said hi, that Anna. She, that you look great. Oh, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. My new BFF. <laughs> <laughs> she would talk about you. No, no, no. She definitely is not talking about me. She's, <laughs> she's not that nice. No, she's... <laughs> She's nice. You are siblings. I am a sibling, though. <laughs> she she once um tried to stab me with scissors. So there's there's that. I honestly my brother ran over my head with his bicycle. <laughs> pretty I'm good. Not making that shit up. I was seven. I, so honestly, if you ever want to have a like a great night, I'll get one of my sisters on here, and we can tell stories of our of our childhood. You'd be like, how the fuck are you still alive? Actually, how the fuck are they still alive? So Dean Cerny. Fucker, he says you're 50. Why don't you just go during senior citizen hour? I'm not wow. 50, fucker. Wow. Fuck you. You need to go to senior citizen hour on your fucking hover round, bitch. Oh, fucked up. That just happened. <laughs> but yeah, going going back to my sisters. When I was a kid, I used to practice WWE wrestling holds on them. I actually once oh, yeah. I gave Anna a pile driver and paralyzed her um, for like <laughs> two minutes. To the point where my mom chased me wait, out of the wait, yard. Wait, wait. Was that the one of those moments? Don't tell mom. Don't tell mom. You're fine. You're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, mom happened to be like hanging clothes up on a on a, on a clothesline, <laughs> and and Anna just goes, "I can't feel anything." 
<laughs> and my mom just looked at me and was just like, I told you to stop fucking around, basically. I, I don't know what her exact words were, but that, that might have <laughs> like, been it. She sounds like me. Rub some dirt on it. You'll be fine. Right. I had to take off running because I was like, oh, shit. I gave I gave my other sister, Nikki, a, a DDT, like, a la Jake the Snake Roberts, oh. and actually gave her a concussion, knocked her out for, like, a good oh, two three shit. minutes. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, we used to, my brother used to wrestle. He's five years older than me. Yep. We used to wrestle all the time. Yeah. So. I did so much worse. <laughs> so back to my, so I go to the park and there's almost no one there. Um, so I started running. Yesterday, um, I totally set myself up for failure. Forgot to do my inhaler before I left the house. Um, which I can feel like <coughs> if this keeps up, I'm going to have to, uh, if I keep having to run the show for you, I'm going to have to do, take a break and do my inhaler really quick. I didn't um, tell you to talk all this time. I'm just fucking with you. Um, so I forgot to do my inhaler and it was, so you're running on the, the park that I went to where the dam is, you're running up on the dam wall. Right. And, um, it's a little windy up there yesterday and I was running facing into the wind I felt like I was going to blow along. So that didn't work out very well, but I got out and I did it. You know, like I know a lot of States, if you get caught out, like Maryland has lost their fucking minds. Like if you leave your house for anything other than groceries, um, they're, they're talking about misdemeanor charges and all this shit. Um, I don't want to say they lost their minds. It's just, it's, I think New York state's going to get that way too, just because of how New York city is like New York city. Yeah. Yeah, they got more cases than China New York right now. City people, you can all stay in New York and don't spread your cooties. You know what's kind of fucked up though, and so we have a we have a place called uh, uh, Chautauqua Institute here. It's basically a did big you say summer. Taco Institute? Ch- Chautauqua Institute. I bet but my county is actually Ch- uh, Chautauqua County, and we have Chautauqua Lake. So we have this big fucking stop. Oh my God, you said Just taco. taco, Taco Institute, Taco Lake. All right, so um, every summer we get all these tourists in from New York City. Mm-hmm. They have like these big fucking nice summer houses up there. Are and they whatnot. banned this year? No, they've all been sneaking here from New York City. That, like literally, wow. we had our um, we I think we only had like two infections in the county for mm-hmm. like. Uh, I a have couple a days. Now we're up to like seven, and we've already had our like our first fatality here. So, um, it's because oh, they're just shit. they're fucking sneaking in, and Bad. yeah, it's, stay home, fuckers. It's bullshit. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm not sneaking away anywhere. Well, that's you know, true. on romantic interludes. They'll not that coming, I would. They'll be coming to Taco Apple. Institute. Yeah. Although I so, want to, go to Taco Institute, I would like some tacos. So yeah. So I was debating whether or not I really should go to the park. I, you guys know that I have asthma, so I've, I've been on quarantine a little bit longer than everybody else has. I'm already going to lose my fucking mind. Like today, I really had the, I'm going to lose my shit. I got to walk away from this computer type of moment. Um, I left my workplace before the height of flu season, <clears throat> and I'm glad I did because it wiped out everybody in my office. Everyone. So I was debating, you know, should I go to the park and see if the trails are open? So I went and well, I looked it up online and, and what the information that I found did say that all the park areas, you know, the public areas are closed, the public gathering areas, but the trails are still open mm-hmm. for now. So I did my thing yesterday. I went to the grocery store. This was my third trip because I forgot parsley and cat litter. And cat litter, you know, if you're a pet owner, you know you can't go out with without your pet supplies. So I go to the grocery so store. It's, it's a weird combo. Like, do you spread the parsley over the top of the cat litter <laughs> to, like, give it a different kind of fragrance? People do buy weird combinations. And you're saying I'm not listening. Like, that's, I heard parsley and cat litter. I had to stop what I was doing. <laughs> no, I just, okay, parsley's for the salad, obviously. Oh, um, yeah, obviously. Wait. So is the cat litter part of the salad too? Is that the crunchy part of it? No, or? that's for afterwards because I couldn't find toilet paper this week. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> no judgment so, here. So um I'm in line and I've got 
and I got a couple things that I was like, oh, I've been meaning to buy this anyways while I'm here. Fuck it. I get all my shit on the conveyor belt, and there's an older couple, probably in their 60s, in front of me. And they both have shit they're paying for separately. Okay. The woman pays second. Now, I'm next in line. And I see her take a a wad of money out of her pocket. It's bills folded in half. And she opens it up, licks her fucking fingers, and counts her money out. Okay, first off, even without the coronavirus... Money is disgusting. Quit licking your fucking yeah. fingers while you're touching do your that. money. Ugh. So she licks her fingers, counts out her money, hands it to the cashier. Cashier's not wearing any protective equipment whatsoever. Cashier does her little thing on the cash register, puts the money in the cash register, customer leaves, and then she starts ringing up my shit. So I'm pretty sure the chances of me catching it at the grocery store are about... 150 million times higher than if I'm going to go to the fucking park. Um, also, too, at the grocery store, what's that thing called? Social distancing? Uh, yes. No. Hey, no oh social my distancing God, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, I was at Walmart picking up a few necessary things, and the employees are, you know, they don't give a shit. Nobody, yeah. nobody cares that works anywhere. They don't care. The none, ones, of the, none of the frontline employees at any of these retailers. I mean, seriously. No, I mean, would you? Um, having asthma, yes. And, you oh, know. yes, but if you didn't have like asthma and stuff, <clears throat> I don't know. I I probably would. I because I know how dangerous this is for a lot of people. Ooh, fuck right. I did not use this this year. <laughs> this is the most random show on VRS. No, have yeah, you seen the bar? Actual, right? <laughs> Have you seen the bar? <laughs> Fuck you, Dean Cerny. Older couple, he says, you mean in your age group. They were in their mid to late 60s, so no. I, you're setting yourself up. You shouldn't even, like, you shouldn't even look at that. Like, you should even be like, nope. Like, oh, my God. That. Jade Lopez. I love you, Jade. She says, I bought til dill pickle flavored chips because I realized I'd touch them. I'm going to start shit. If I did that every time I was in the grocery store, I'd be twice my size. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so you know how necessity is the mother of invention I guess you've never heard that term before I've heard it I know well, I know what it means so. I don't like words <clears throat> this is something that is a little horrifying to me I'm on the fence about this one I'm too centrist for my own good because I can't make a decision whether or not this is a good idea. So help me, help me. Maybe our listeners can help me figure this out. I'm not sure how I feel about this. ABC News was just an article I brought up when I decided to start Googling this shit. So a new beat for police across the U.S. enforcing social distance. In New York City, they started dismantling basketball hoops to prevent people from gathering in parks and playing. In Lakewood, New Jersey, police broke up a wedding being held in violation of a ban on large gatherings. And in Austin, Texas, officers are encouraging people to call a hotline to snitch on violators of the city's orders for people to stay home. I saw that. Police departments are taking a lead role in enforcing social distancing guidelines that health officials say are critical to containing COVID-19, along with park rangers, fire inspectors, and other public servants. Officers more accustomed to chasing suspects and solving crimes are spending these troubled days cajoling people to stay at least six feet apart. I'm not sure how I feel about these snitch lines because it's not just in Texas. Um, these lines are popping up all over the country. Now, yeah. one, people obviously are getting jobs from these snitch lines. So that's a good thing. People need jobs all the time, but especially right now. Right. But it's not just happening here. It's happening in, the, in Canada. It's happening in China. Um, I'm trying to think where else I saw when I was doing a search for this. But there are several countries that have these snitch lines. Um, I I just think of all the Karens that are going to call in. I think that's the problem that I have with it. Oh, so Dean Cerny! 
<laughs> I can't. Man, you guys never, you guys never, ever, ever let us down. Dean Cerny says, next show on Fox, Karen 911. It needs to happen. It totally needs to what, happen. What about the old scene? Snitches get stitches. Seriously. Yeah. I, <clears throat> well, and here's my thing. These little snitch hotlines are going to be, uh, so here's how I heard about it. So I was in, there is a very small spouses group that I'm, you know, the dependipotamus group, uh, that I'm still a part of. We were all very good friends and these ladies helped me get some really tough, get through some really tough times when I was a male spouse. Um, and you know, I, I, I've, I've known these women for 12 years, so some of them I've never met. A lot of them I've never met, but we know each other's stories very, very well. So we're in this small Facebook group and somebody says, somebody starts a, th a thread and it says, um, which one of you oh, had. God. I just farted again. Holy shit. Oh, All right, continue. You're good. You're good. It wasn't as bad as I thought. I quit. <laughs> So it's, it's hard to work under these conditions. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Is it the quarantine or the hot pockets getting to you? Uh, it's uh, grandma's hot pockets. Yeah. Okay. So this woman makes a post and she says, which one of it was you who got their kid called on because you let him go run with his friend? And I was like, what? So I'm reading all the responses and they're all talking about these snitch lines in their cities where they live. And I'm like, this is, they're making shit up. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm Googling this. And lo and behold, and I, you know, if the, and the kids actually did, she said the kids stayed far apart from, you know, like they, they, they maintained a distance, but apparently these kids are in high school and they run track or whatever. And, you know, they want to stay in shape and, and keep from being bored. And, right. You know, it's not like you're telling your kids, hey, go to the bathroom and or go, you know, go to the grocery store into the bathroom and videotape or video record yourself licking public toilet seats. Letting the kids go run. I just I don't. Like I said, I'm on the fence about what it feels so icky. I see the necessity for it. But at the same time, I just picture all these Karens, you know, calling, yeah. calling the manager. It's a little horrifying, actually. And, now and you, and you know what happened, so. Oh, yeah. You know they're going to be just absolutely stupid calls. Yeah. So, again, another uh, invention because of, the, because of the Kung flu. So. <clears throat> How does that even work on a job resume? Um, I'm a full-time snitch. <laughs> I, I. I man the snitch call center. Right. How does that work? I don't know. So they um another I don't know who started this website. Let me look, see if I can find it. it was that Karen? It was probably Brenda. <laughs> no, this is another. So this is another necessity is the mother in, of invention. There is now a website that you can go to so that you will know exactly what you need to purchase at the grocery store. And you tell the website, it's called howmuchtoiletpaper.com. You type oh, yeah, in the yeah, number, yeah. Yeah, you use that. the slider, and I'll yep. post a link to this so you can share this ridiculousness with your friends. There's, a, there's two slide bars roles you have so we're gonna say let's pretend i'm one of those moron hoarders and i don't know what you can buy in those big packs let's just say what 48 does that sound about right yeah i have 48 rolls of toilet paper and i go to the bathroom on average five times a day let's just say that all right <sighs> that toilet paper will last me 154 days or 1,100% of your quarantine. Now, based on the average that moron consumer panic, 
Titanic consumers have purchased recently, the overall average is Americans will survive over 500% of their quarantine. So that's why I used that the other day on my Facebook post when I was like, thanks fuckers for buying an estimated 500% more than you'll actually need. I just, I think it's really pathetic that we need this as a thing. Right. (laughs) Dean Cerny says, Judy is talking, Lunchbox is playing hoarders. And not playing hoarders. So there's your link in the comments. How much toilet paper.com. Turns out I'm good. I am not hoarding. I am just right. Because I, I, I just, I, it makes my head hurt. Uh Oh, what Ashley, but Ashley moon Butler says, I just sent you the new tide pod challenge. Oh, that God. kids are doing. You have to watch it. I'm a little scared. Who did she send it to? She probably uh, sent it to me. Hold on, let me. Oh, she sent it to me. Okay. Let's look at. It. What is this? I don't have my glasses on. That's hard to see right now. Okay, I think I found it. No, I don't want to translate this page. I just want to watch the stupid video. What in... Oh! Uh, I have seen this. Okay, I don't know what the fuck they're calling this, but stupidity is right. So, kids inhale some sort of aerosol. Oh, I've seen this, yes. And the first girl I saw is the girl that's in the main video on this. This is how... I, I just... I can't even... You know, I shouldn't be surprised by this, though, because we did one of the challenges that kids were doing... You know, the challenges that I was telling my friends, or sorry, my kids, you know, hey, if your friends are doing this, you need to stay away from your friends. Kids were uh, pouring rubbing alcohol on themselves, standing in a shower, pouring rubbing alcohol on themselves, and then lighting it on fire. That might be fun in a Turkish bathhouse when you're getting a haircut and you need your ears cinched. (laughs) But these, so these young girls are inhaling some sort of aerosol and then right after in it from a can, and then as soon as they, they're done inhaling it, they take a lighter and blow it. Well, because the way aerosol dissipates into the air, they get a big flash and it hits their face as well. It's, yeah. What the fuck is wrong with – what is wrong with you people? And they're all – everybody that does it, they're all getting the flash right on their face because the way aerosol dissipates. Stupid. Yeah, no. Let's uh-huh. see. Oh, now one of the segments that Lunchbox and I talked about maybe starting, this is, you know, you guys know this is our show is still an infantile stage. I know we've been around for two months now, but we haven't had a solid two months worth of show. So, (laughs) oh my God, Bob Jordan. (laughs) I go to take a drink and I see Bob. I'm reading Bob Jordan's comment on, on at the same time. I rub baby out, boy, baby oil on myself for the male lady. Interesting. Yeah, How old's that male lady there, Bob? Oh boy. <laughs> mm. Okay. Dean Cerny says y'all haven't talked about Tiger King yet. Siegfried and Roy meets the Beverly Hillbillies meets the Branch Davidians. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. my god! You... I need a screenshot of that. All Hold right. on. Print screen. <laughs> okay, so Judy. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on. Okay. I have not seen it. You can tell me whatever you want to because I probably won't remember. Go. No, I mean, it's fucking amazing is all it is. Like, it really <laughs> is exactly what fucking Dean just said. It is. Dude, like, Charlie Sheen is sitting, sitting somewhere going, these guys are fucked up. Like, he's <laughs> saying that these guys are fucked up. Like I, oh, that's magical. You need like I think it's about six hours long the whole the whole damn thing. So mm-hmm. I mean you could you could do it in freaking spurts, but um, yeah. Um, I binge watched the rookie this weekend, so I don't need spurts. Um, Ashley. Um, yeah. I mean, if you want to make it an overlay, that would, that'd be great. I'm just really lazy and just haven't made one yet. Yeah. Because I've been. Honestly, it's really weird. I thought because like we'd all be trapped in the house, I'd be doing more stuff on my computer and online. I haven't. I have been just hanging out with my wife and daughter, like basically 
the whole time and taking you know in there. It's been great. That is one of the things that I have noticed, and I got to tell you, I this has forced a lot of people to get back to what really fucking means something in life. When I was driving to the grocery store last week in the middle of the week, um, I it was still light out and there were kids playing in the yard mm -hmm. and kids riding bikes and, you know, and, and families, whole families walking dogs. And I thought to myself, wow, if that's what it takes to get us back to what really fucking matters, that's pretty awesome. And also, I was like, the 70s and 80s called, they want their childhoods back. You know, I mean, it's just, it's incredible to see that. You know, I used to force my kids outside all the time. Right. You know, get away from the damn TV. They didn't have phones until, um, I think they were, they were all in double digits in age, that's for sure. They shared a phone when we first, the three girls shared a phone. And it stayed at home, and they only used that phone to, you know, to talk to us when they were home by themselves. That was it. Right. So they didn't have phone, but we had very, very strict rules. You know, no, no cell phones at the dining room table. Um, when you're with your people, be with your people. And there, you know, it, 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 it's not like, hey, here's the rule, and this is how it is, and you're gonna abide by this. This is very second. I mean, it never falls in place like that, especially with kids. Um, you know, I did have to nip at their heels a couple times. Um, we had Christmas Eve one year where I was like, all right, let's not forget if we're on our cell phones. We don't, oh, no, this was family dinner. And one of them was sitting on the couch scrolling her phone. And I just said, hey, let's not forget, everybody. If you're on your cell phone, you're not with your people. And right. that was all I had to say. Right. So it was awesome to, to be driving to my grocery store and seeing people, like I said, doing doing the things that matter. You know, God, I hope you guys don't all drive each other crazy. Make the best of this time. Absolutely. No, it, it's actually been pretty fucking cool. So I brought the, so I have like a family room down in the basement and currently it's the sort through the garage room, but, um, that's where we have all of our, all of our video game stuff. So I brought our switch, our Nintendo switch up into the living room and we like all day we spent gaming. We've been playing, like we played Monopoly on it. We played Risk on it. We played, uh, um, Mario Kart some other Splatoon game that my daughter was showing me that I was getting my ass kicked in. And um, it's been a lot of fun. Plus, we've been busting out board games like here, here and there. Like, we played a little, uh, uh, what the fuck is that game where everybody dies? Um, um, Oregon Trail, where everybody uh, fucking dies. So, yeah, we're doing that. And <laughs> just having a blast. Dean Cerny says, when do kids get to jump off bikes as shady ass ramps? In the street, y'all know what I'm talking about. BMX bike versus dad's junk plywood and a few bricks. Amen to that. Right. I did that shit, too. I, I was right there with the boys laying in the street at the end of the ramp. You know, the, the last kid covering their face because everybody had to be the last kid at least once. <clears throat> that was some fun times. You can't play that right now, though, Dane. You can't because you have to do social distancing, you know. And when you laid on the ground, you had to be shoulder to Unless. shoulder. Unless you can jump six feet over the kid. That's, yes. That's the real challenge. Yeah. Well, we used to put multiple kids like shoulder to shoulder at the end of the ramp because we had a, a, a pretty good neighborhood pack. Right. I mean, we had enough kids in my neighborhood that I grew up with that I would. Um, <sighs> I broke my nose playing kill the carrier. I still made it to the end goal, but I broke my nose. I ate some dude's collarbone with my nose. Nice. And I got my lovely Roman bridge out of that out of that deal. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are surprised by this or not, but I was a little bit of a tomboy. That's weird. I, I never heard that before. <laughs> so one of the segments that Lunchbox and I are talking about starting, we're going to do something that's kind of like news that's happening in our area. We were a little worried about coming up with material for tonight because nothing's happening. Like even Florida man might be abiding by the quarantine rules Bastard. and the, and the, um, the curfew rules and shit. We've got some stories though. We are going to bring you entertainment. We promise to do that. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure what we're going to call this segment is something about in, in, 
diss my hood or something like that. So this is news that is happening directly around us and why we love living where we live. This comes from my one of my coworkers, uh, WVLT News. He sent this to me in Powell, Tennessee, which is not far from Knoxville. The headline, I'm going to read the headline last. Okay. One man was taken into custody after court documents show he was accused of entering a Powell gas station completely in the nude. And I missed it. According to the records, Jalen Clay went into the Rocky Top Market on East Emory Road Saturday afternoon without any clothes on. Clay allegedly took a bottle of water and left without paying. Well, where is he going to keep his wallet? <laughs> I mean... I don't even know. Whether, you don't why want that. If guy. listen, if he's got a wallet on him when he's naked, just let him go without paying. Yeah. You don't want that. No. <laughs> Ew. According no. to records, Jalen Clay. Oh, sorry. He allegedly took a, le- a bottle of water without paying. Witnesses told investigators that he re-entered the store shortly after, and began knocking items off the shelves. Why not? Right. Clay, Clay allegedly punched one woman in the head. Then began throwing sausages at the cashier. Arrest records show Clay was stunned by officers repeatedly before they were able to take him into custody. He faces charges of assault. Now, here's why this is funny. The headline reads, this is probably one of the more eye-catching headlines I've seen since I've started radio. Naked man charged in Powell sausage assault. (laughs) Sausage assault. Isn't that something that it lo- I should put on my like my Tinder profile? Isn't that what I'm looking for? <laughs> Silence. Yes! I achieved my goal. Crickets. I don't really have a good uh, answer for that. I am so I mean, disappointed I mean, that I missed this, though. Like, seriously, I that is... But maybe you should update your profile, though. Yeah, I should. And while we're talking about this kind of stuff, hashtag when boredom sets in, this is what the the Kung flu is doing to people. It's making people this bored. Uh, Let's see. Well, that one's going to wait till later. This, okay, this is actually kind of sad, but there is a a funny part to it. Again, in in my, what, dis my hood, Roan County deputies my, and firefighters. My hood, yo. Res- my hood, yo. Roan County deputies and firefighters responded to a mobile home on the 4700 block of Roan State Highway Saturday for smoke coming from the residence. Officers heard 45-year-old Wendell Dallas Kaiser of Kingston inside yelling for help, but would not come out of the home. Deputies forced their way in, only to learn the door was screwed shut. Kaiser reportedly. <laughs> barricaded in the residence and blocked an open window with debris. First responders forcibly removed Kaiser from the structure and he allegedly told officers he was aware the house was on fire but someone was out to get him. Hmm. Now, this next part, I know some of our listeners may have a hard time believing. The report states that Kaiser was under the influence of meth. Yeah, no one saw that coming on this show. I was all for the guy, too, until that happened. Damn it. <laughs> I know, right? He was charged with three counts of reckless endangerment and one count of resisting arrest. And the Monday Night Mayhem judge and jury can convict him of chronic stupidity. Dun-dun. 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 <laughs> Dun-dun. Um, another one of Dis My Hood. Yo, and when boredom sets in all at the same time. A Spring Hill, Tennessee man is facing charges in Cumberland County facing a theft incident. Fairfield Glade Police initially responded to a call of a subject driving recklessly in the area of Food City on Peavine Road. A Cumberland County deputy learned the driver, 32-year-old Alexander J. Kish, allegedly took an expensive bottle of liquor from a business and fled the scene. After leading authorities on a brief vehicle pursuit, Fairfield Glade police stopped Kish on Wilshire Heights Drive, 
A sobriety test was attempted because of his erratic actions, and he reportedly became uncooperative. Mm. I would pay money to see that on video. Now, the reason this one is funny is because of the mug shot. Hey, Mike Lane just joined us. I served with him. Good to see you, Mike. Nice. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I just posted that link. Um, the guy's mug shot, he just looks incredibly proud of his debauchery, I guess you would call it. Like, like it's almost like he's posing for his company ID or something instead of <laughs> a fucking mug shot. This is, I'm telling you, man, this show is going to pick up quickly as people get bored, right? Don't Should. you think? Should. Yeah. 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 Oh, so let me get my next. Now this is, this is, I'm a little excited about this. Just a little? A little bit. Okay. So friends of mine, I've never been to this place, but I've been told it's, okay, certain regions of the country have those, like those convenience gas station places that are like the mega centers, like, do you got you have sheets? Do you have sheets where you live? So we do in Pennsylvania, which is only like just straight down the road from me. Right. So I I really I love sheets. I really love of all the the, the the chain places on the road. And unfortunately I don't have sheets here because pilot headquarters is in Knoxville. So there will never be sheets in this state uh, if they have anything to do if pilot has anything to do with it. But there will be Bucky's, and I'm very excited about this. I have uh, my battle buddy in Texas can't shut up about Bucky's, about how great their food is, and we are getting one. Um, uh, that's it's going to be a little bit of a ways a drive from here, but I do I will be passing the area where it will be, so I'm super excited that we're getting Bucky's here. Sweet. I finally get to try it. I, never I, I saw that on the local news, and I was like, ha ha ha, like angels were singing. Right. So when I was looking for the news story about the dude with the sausages mm -hmm. that led me down the internet rabbit hole. Oh, God. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why this was in my Google hits, my Google search results. It was an Urban Dictionary entry. And it was... I've, I, I, I can't even, I, I fucking love Urban Dictionary. It has never failed to entertain me. In fact, Threcon 5 Radio had a segment called UrbanDictionary.com. Um, this one, oh, I love this. The Kentucky Meat Shower. That is an actual term. I didn't know that. It says, when you are having sexual encounters with multiple rednecks and they pour chicken grease all over your naked body and start to rub their erect dawns all over you. <sighs> what a hard time reading that one. Oh, God. The sentence example is, she smelt of penis. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> She smelt of penis and chicken after her first Kentucky meat shower last night. There, I said it. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck is oh. wrong with the internet? A lot of things, apparently. <laughs> I love the rabbit hole. Oh my God. Oh. Sweet Jesus. Oh my God. Scott Penthony says he loves the rabbit hole. Mike Lane says deep trouble now. Absolutely. The rabbit hole is magical. It really is. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, why am I here? You know, like an hour later, you're like, why am I reading about the mating habits of rabbits when they're on a spacecraft? You know? And then all of a sudden, that. Uh, right. Mike right. Lane actually, yes. Hold on. Let me get to that. So Mike Lane actually tuned in at the perfect time. Well, and I mean, before we even get to that, now we got Dean Surdy searching Pornhub. See what you did? Oh, my God. For real? Yeah. That's great. Okay. So <clears throat> some of you guys saw my post um, 
the I made a post on Saturday about a really shitty start to my day. <sighs> so I had a really bad. So I woke up early Saturday morning and I was in a good mood. And then I fell back asleep. And I woke up feeling <laughs> this is what regret feels like. Um, I woke up because I had a bad, really, really bad dream. And in my dream, I was, and it was something about, it was a dream about something that's going on in my, in my conscious, in my awake life. And it's been very difficult for me to handle. So I'm crying in my dream and I'm doing like, ladies, you know it, ugly cry, hyperventilating, can't calm down. That's what I was doing in my dream. And that is how I woke up. So, um, this has only happened twice to me in my life. And the two times it has happened has been since my divorce as a result of my, of the issues that are my divorce. The last time it happened, it wrecked my fucking, my entire weekend. And this time I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I, I'm going to, I I didn't really set a time frame for myself, but I, I had to restrict the morning time because it was what my dream was telling me was to deal with what's really going on. So I sat down and this is the second time I've done this in a week. I used to do this all the time. I started writing just to get the shit out and kind of sort out all these random thoughts in my head and, you know, just put down random memories. So I made a post. Look, okay. I had to name it something because I'm writing on my computer. So I have to name it something so I can find it again. Cause I just opened up a word document and I'm like, just start typing away, you know, burning up the keyboard as much as I possibly can with this stupid thing on my hand. So <clears throat> I named it because I had to name it something eye catching that I would go, Oh, there's my memoir right there or journal or whatever you want to call it. So then I made a post that actually you guys totally lifted my spirits with this when I posted this. Um, I made a post that says, the first person who guesses what I named my memoir gets an on-air high five Monday night. Dean Cerny gets the party started with fuckery shenanigans and a raging Pornhub addiction. <laughs> Mike Lane who has seen some of the worst of me because he and I served together and we were in the barracks together. You know, all your barracks mates are the reason that you guys can, and me, we can never run for office. And Mike Lane is one of those guys. Right, Lunchbox? Um, I could never run for office. <laughs> well, my barracks time is why I could never run for office. Unless Mike I Lane just employ... does if I employ everybody that I served with, then I should be okay. Yeah. Is that how cabinets are built? I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. <laughs> so Mike Lane just says, I did what? With a bunch of question marks. Uh, Lawrence Talbot, who I also served, he was an NCO. Um, I also served with him. He goes by Rooster. He says, I can't make this shit up. That's, that's actually a pretty good guess. Lunchbox's response was snort. You guys know what that what that's about. I thought um, it was a fair one. It is. It absolutely is fair. Uh, Jason J.J. Ballier, who I also served with, and he's one of those that would be a member of my cabinet. I think I'm going to have to... Wait a minute. I'm going to have to write that down. Cabinet members used to be... We're, we're going with that. That's our title from now on. What's that? Cabinet members. Mm. Yes. People that you resided in the barracks with. We called them dorms, but I'm totally writing that down. So, uh, so that was uh, JJ Ballier's. I see stupid people. Mini me, John Kramerine says, "How I never managed to murder anyone." That's a good title, but you know, there's always the possibility. Uh, <laughs> Jim Vise, who I also served with, um. Jim Bies is going to have to go um, on the um, my cabinet members because uh, list because Jim Bies and I served together. Um, we were actually 
uh, TDY. So we were stationed in Germany together and we were TDY to Goose Bay, Canada when September 11th happened and we got grounded for over a week. So uh, the only thing there was to do was drink. Uh, Minnie Me's wife, Michelle Kremering, says coffee cats in combat. I love that. That's actually very cute. <clears throat> Brad Walker, who was the other half of the Mike Lane troublemaker crew, um, says, so he's definitely like Brad and Mike are getting the top positions in my cabinet when I'm elected to office. Uh, he said, Brad says, Mrs. Strangelove or how I learned to love myself instead of others and cats and dogs. Uh, Mike Stedman, smart ass. He just goes, my memoir, James Reichert. He says, stupid people suck. Patrick Doc Lang says, bitch be gone. Huh. Dwayne Troll. Oops. I did it again. Oh. Now, you guys know I go on my Facebook account is Judy G. Dan Brownell, who I also served with, um, He's, I don't know if he'll be a cabinet member, but he's going to get appointed to something. Um, ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. <laughs> that was his suggested suggestion. Bob Jordan, Diary of a Mad Woman, fist bump, totally. Will Smith, who um, he has been, in, in, he tunes into our shows very often. The Adventures of What the Fuck Was I Thinking? That absolutely is the God's Honest Truth. <laughs> now, Bulldog. Not really sure where Bulldog was going with this. Was it? He says, who fucking cares? <laughs> I don't know if he meant like who cares about my post or or if that's the post. That's the name of my my memoir. We're going to go with that's the name of my memoir. Uh, Uncle Sai says, how your school changed my life? <sighs> this might. There's a couple that are my favorite. Kevin Williams says, fucker. Um. <laughs> A memoir devoted to embracing the asshole that is me. Ashley Moon Butler, no time for fuckboys. Amen, sister. Uh, Pat McCrotch, who goes by, also goes by Bob's and Vagine. Eat a dick fucker, the life and times of Judy the Pimpress, because I did pimp him out to somebody, and they've been together for about a year and a half now. Um, is that how pimping works? <laughs> well, here's how it works. Dude, I've got a friend that lives not far from you, and she works six days a week, and she has cancer and an immune disorder that she's being treated for, and she's about to get written up by the city because she can't cut her own grass on her one day off. Mm. Do you know anybody, like, do you work with anybody that has teenage kids that might want to make a couple extra bucks? I'm going to pay them. I need somebody to cut her grass. And he's like... Give me the address and I'll be there Saturday morning. And there it is. That was it? That was it. That's all it took. I was like, dude, not you. I just need... And he's like, nope, I'll be there Saturday morning. Uh, Uncle Cy also suggested moving right along. Anthony Cornett, who is one of my gym motivators, he says, I'm not here to live up to your expectations and you are not here to live up to mine, JG69. <laughs> Don Shea says, thank you, Jody. Amen to that. Um, Eric Chappell, smart ass, he says, the correct answer is Judy couldn't think of a good name, so she came up with this game in hopes of finding the perfect title from us fuckers. <laughs> Tracy Coquit Rives, uh, she also is, she will definitely get a cabinet position. Are you fucking kidding me? Jason Pyle, guide to not pissing me off. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna be a novel. Um, uh, Kyle Lundy, old Rocky Top or Aim High. Mare Hoover, Chaos. She says the, the title is Chaos. Choosing Hope Alters One Soul. Oh, wait, that's mine. She says yours, my title should be coming, Judy. So what I actually named it, there is one person who got as close as he possibly could. Um, I couldn't think of anything, so I was just like, fuck. There it is. <laughs> I just typed in caps. Fuck. That's all I wrote. And I'm like, I don't know. I'll come up with something later. Fuck this. Fuck whatever. You know, I'll come up with something later. My coworker, Adam Wolford. This is how well my coworker knows me because I am changing my memoir name to this. Oh, God. What is it? It's very simple. And I don't know why I didn't come up with this myself. Fuck this shit. A memoir. <laughs> That is fucking perfection. That is so me. 
he messaged me, I don't know, I think it was Saturday night or Sunday night. He's like, so are you renaming your, are you renaming your uh, memoir? And I was like, you bet your ass you are, I am. I love that name. So there it is. That's my name. <laughs> Scott Penthony, Pimpin' Ain't Easy. That's actually not a bad idea. Mike Lane, there we go. One of my oldest friends approves with Fuck This Shit, a memoir. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let me see. So now we can scratch that off, <clears throat> that off the list. Uh, yes. Remember our name? Gown. Uh, Kung Flu stuff? Gown. Lord of Man? Gown. Oh, <laughs> Spider Killer. You need, you, uh, you need, we're, we're taking oh, yes. applications. Yes, um, I I am accepting applications for Resident Spider Killer, um, and it will be absolutely Spider Killer. If you're one of the people who escorts them out of the house, you are automatically disqualified. Applications go through Lunchbox or the Monday Night Mayhem radio page, and here's why. So we have two things in Tennessee that are more horrifying than anything I ever saw in Texas, so you Texas fuckers can eat it. Because I was at Fort Hood and we had to get an exterminator because we lived out in Kempner. Any of you guys familiar with the Fort Hood area know Kempner is like the wild, you know, it's kind of like the wild, wild west out there. It's towards Lampazas. Um, we used to get scorpions in the house. I had to hire or Orkin to come in every 45 days because it was pretty bad there. Right. We have worse shit here in Tennessee. It's fucking terrible. So we have these things called, um, they're, they're, uh, the name of these fucking things irritates me. They're called house centipedes. They sound completely harmless. They are fast as fuck. They have 11 legs and their legs move like they're flowing in the wind, almost like it's a leaf, not a leaf, um, a feather blowing. And it kind of ripples like that very quickly. If you think you see, especially springtime, if you think you see something moving on your floor out of the corner of your eye at about 90 miles an hour, you do. You actually do. Go kill that thing. They're very hard to kill because they're very fast. They're excellent swimmers. They come in through your pipes um, and around, you know, that's most, most pests come in around your plumbing. Um, and they're absolutely fucking disgusting. And my cats sit there and just watch them go across the floor as I'm yelling, you're fucking fired at them. <laughs> and when you kill them with a shoe, they explode into a million pieces. But a lot of their legs keep moving when you kill them. Oh, and why do I know this? Because I have to kill these fuckers because I live alone. Oh. Um, I just want to say hi to Lisa. Um, she is the person who cuts my hair. Unfortunately, I oh. am a fucking wildebeest now. Well, so. of course you are. She's not allowed to cut your hair. I know. So, also, too, I've, I've known her for, like, almost my entire life. So, hi, Lisa. Thank you for tuning in. But, um, yeah, I'm in desperate need of a fucking haircut. Like, oh, I'm glad I, I got mine done two weeks ago. Like, they can't take this off because it's, it's getting bad. You're just gonna shave your head. That's what I do anyway. So, but it's it's so when a person shaves their head, like like I've been shaving my head ever since I was in the military, and it starts growing back. You're just like, fuck, what is that? Like you see where <laughs> all the receding hairlines. And oh yes. Are. Yeah. So. I can't really say anything because the last time I got my hair done a couple weeks ago, I got blonde put through the top. And the way she had to do the blonde to make it look right around my face, I got blonde put here, and God bless, did that show. <laughs> like, right. I was like, ooh, that's a little thinner there than it was 10 years ago. We're going to do that dark next time. <laughs> Dean Cerny says, house centipedes are good for the house. They kill all the bugs. No, no, they're not, because we also have these things. Anybody who spent any time in Iraq or the sandbox it, in general will cringe when you hear, I call them spigots. They are, um, they're camel crickets, camel crickets. Think about that. You guys all, all you guys that went to the desert, like, I guess I never saw any in, in Saudi Arabia, but you guys that went to Iraq, 
I've heard the horror stories. I've seen some unfortunate videos. Uh, camel crickets are horrifying because they jump like crickets um, and they look like spiders and they're really fucking hard to kill. And again, with the cats, sometimes Tuffy will go after them. Sometimes he just sits there and looks at it like, I got food right over there if I'm hungry. So yeah, we're 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 now accepting res- <laughs> job applications for resident spider killer, resident pest control. How's that? Yeah. Ugh. Oh, I can't. I can't even. You know, when I was, I have severe anxiety about spiders because when I was a kid, I woke up with a full-grown adult tarantula on my chest. Um. So it's a legit fear, but. Nothing makes you conquer your fears more than becoming a parent. You know, not, you never, I, if you'd have asked me when I was 25 or, or if you'd have told me, Hey, 10 years from now, you're going to say to your kids, let me help you with your math homework or let me go kill that spider for you. I'd have been like, you have lost your damn mind. Just because I did doesn't mean I like to kill all these things. I want them out of my house in general. It's right. it's god awful. I I seriously, someone please come help me. Yeah, when we so me and my daughter took a walk in the woods. I don't have silverfish, Dean. He says they kill silverfish, and when they're gone, I I don't have those. Yeah, so me it's me and my daughter took a walk through the woods either Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday, and. uh we saw so many little baby wolf spiders all over the damn place. Oh, good. they're god awful here. They are seriously, they're the wolf spiders here are bigger than the ones in Texas. So fuck you, Texas. Yeah, they're everywhere. And I've so, been, been bit a couple times by, by wolf spiders. They're fucking nasty. Yeah. Jade Lopez says, we joked that the moths in Haiti were radioactive. There is a moth in Central America that um, its saliva is an anticoagulant. Ooh. Yeah. That's the health and safety briefing you get your first day when you when when we used to deploy to Panama. I was like, oh well, fun times, good times. So we're coming up at the end. We are. So uh, I listen. I, I had a bad day. I'm going to admit it. I've been on quarantine for a long fucking time. Um, I don't have a lot of people close to me. Um, so I'm going to tell you as, as, as this quarantine carries on, check on your people, um, you know, check on your friends. If you haven't heard from somebody in a while, you know, um, I, I have started doing this because I'm terrible. I've been terrible at this. I'll be getting ready to work or working out or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, I haven't heard from so-and-so in a while. I'll message them later. Me and my short-term memory later comes and I'm like, who was I thinking about? Or I, I, I won't even remember that I had that thought. So check on your people. Um, like I said, if you have a thought that you haven't heard from somebody, you know, take a second, write it down that you need to check on them. Or just send a message if you're able to interrupt your time and, you know, hey, just check in on you. Are you doing okay? Because you know what? This fucking sucks. It really does. And we don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, it's, it's, it's rough. It's going to be rough on a lot of people, um, especially people who are jobless and don't have any source of income whatsoever. You know, this is going to be, a lot of people will not recover from this financially. Um, so take care of each other, be good yeah. to each other, find the good things out there. You know, you guys heard me talk about seeing kids playing in the neighborhood and riding their bikes and, and families walking dogs together and everything. That's their quarantine group, obviously. Um, go out and find the positives in all of this. It's out there. I promise it is. Mm -hmm. But you've got to keep looking for it or you're never going to see it. You have to go out and look for it or look for it in the news or whatever. Because, I, like I said, I had to stop watching the news. So start looking for the positives. Yep. Yeah. Dean Cerny said it perfectly. He says, because I was talking about how we, I don't see people. Um, I don't have a lot of people around me. Um, 
I did when I went running Sunday, um, I met one of my coworkers who's um, one of my sisters. She uh, is an Air Force and an Army vet. Um, her second branch of service was Army. Um, she's a um, combat medic. Um, and her and I <clears throat> are very, very close because of that. Um, but her and I met for the walk. And, you know, it's not like I can hug her or anything. You know, we had to keep our distance. But like Dean Cerny says, I have people that live within five blocks from me and they won't even call y'all or it. So take, you know, we do have a tight, a pretty tight group here. Take care of each other. Mike Lane, I love you so much. Hugs girlfriend is what he says. Um, you guys have been amazing to me over the years. And I'm so glad that we were able to reunite through Facebook. It's, it's, it's been pretty awesome. So, yeah, take care of each other. Love you guys. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I've been um, periodically. I'll I'll take a couple friends that I either have in my, yep. my contacts or mm-hmm. on a Facebook, and I'll send some a message each day. You know, um, but it's always hey, something different. Yeah, it's always something different. Absolutely. Um, like I, I reached out to people that I went, I went to high school with today, and um, that I know. Like I, I got a. I have a good friend of mine. He's out in Chicago, and I have another one that's out. That's actually on active duty right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's down in North Carolina. I think he's at Bragg. And uh, just said, "Hey, what's up? You know, how are, how are things going? How are you guys doing?" And I also know they have they have they have family back up this way too. So you know, let them know if they need anything to holler, and I'll I'll run out and do whatever. I holler. Need to do, but, but um, yeah, just check on your peeps. There's a lot of entertaining uh, TV out there right now. Netflix has got that whole Tiger Chain thing. That, <laughs> that shit is amazing. Like, it really makes me not want to move down south because, man, how the fuck did these people get away with this shit for so damn long? But, um, what else? WrestleMania is coming up this weekend. We didn't even talk oh. about this, wrestling. Um, it's going to be a two-day event, though. They're going to spread it out over two days because they have no fans. They're going to do it to an empty house. It's um, so weird. It will be weird. Um, I was just reading some of the, the stuff on Bleacher Report about it. They're saying they'll, they'll probably have a lot of video packages. Um, right. I mean, they could, they got to kind of spread it out. And they're they're going to they're going to try to entertain us. And I know the now is that going to be on the WWE Network as well? Or are they going to air it there? Yeah, they're going to have it on. They're, they're they're only going to have it on the network. So okay, that's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. It, it, those are always pay per views. Yeah, but I was just curious. Yeah, and honestly, Vince McMahon's going to lose a lot. I mean, anybody that's even doing anything right now, they're, they're going to lose a lot of money. But Vince McMahon doesn't give a shit. Dude's, get, dude's got money. Um, yeah, he can afford the loss. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, and get outside when you can. I mean, um, we had like yesterday. It was. Fucking New York's got some bizarre weather going on right now. Yesterday oh my god, was, it was gorgeous here this weekend. Gorgeous. It was Seventy yesterday here. Today it was forty to forty-five. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, definitely check on the ones that you know that are always there for you. Why not? And check in, Dean. Appreciate you always being here. We uh, give you a lot of shit, but you take it all in stride, and we love you. We love you for it. Um, yeah. Just check on your peeps. See anybody out there doing something stupid with this whole coronavirus thing. Like, you see somebody who is, like, just acting a fool out there. Fucking tell them to knock it off, man. This shit is... I mean, there's a lot of people saying this this, this virus is just, you know, regular old flu and whatnot. Yeah, it's fucking killing killing people, though. <laughs> it's like the flu. Like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, shouldn't fuck around with it if you don't have to. I'm not laughing at what you're saying. I'm laughing at yeah. tarot... Yeah, Terrell yeah. Dactyl's comment, he says, they should put a bunch of mannequins in the seat so it looks like there's a crowd. Dude, so another wrestling promotion, uh, AEW, actually was having the guys that are heels or bad guys in the audience heckling the guys that are doing the match. It was fucking amazing. Nice. Because they're just talking straight shit to them as they're fucking wrestling. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they want to do. Right. But that's a, that's it for us this week. Um, you guys have a good week. Take care. Stay strong. Yep. Check on each other. Check, Send us funny kung fu stories. Um, we'll start that GoFundMe for somebody to get a sex robot. Um, 
<laughs> we just we got to figure out who's going to be the lucky per, um, participant in me the robot experiment. So we're going to get you a guy. You, you absolutely. Want, you want the Terminator in your house? Let me think about that. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. All right, I'm going to set up a fucking fucking GoFundMe. You're going to get this shit. All right. <laughs> We love you all. I want the deluxe edition. I don't want no fucking roll tide edition. Oh god. <laughs> comes in <laughs> Yeehaw, you my sister. <laughs> like, fuck. Oh my god. Alright. We, right. we we love you, you all. We'll see you next love you week. Guys. All right. See you later, guys.